Questions to ask throughout a campaign with the confidence rising. I told JC Nate and Rich that good times are coming, no need for deep diving. Sign Cam's reactions, watch along to the pride of London thriving. The Eagles of South stay flying. Keep your eyes on us, we ain't hiding. <laughs> Big up everyone, hope you're doing well. Uh, this is the Everton match reaction now. I'll be completely honest with you. Um, I chucked it out in our in our group group chat. I was like, I need 24 hours to process this because I was fuming, <laughs> absolutely fuming. Nate, how you doing, my friend? Hi. Ah, Nate's muted. Um, no, no, no. Sorry, I'm here. Just somebody was calling me, but I, I just had to see what it was. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I don't know what to say about that, really, because part of me is not shocked we, we held beating up at Goodison because there's more L's held there than there is in the city of Liverpool. That's how I feel about mm. going there, bro. So it is what it is. But I'm actually glad we lost this game only because certain people got too carried away with our results over the last three games. We barely beat Leeds, barely beat Wolves, and we're probably fortunate to get away from Leicester with a point. If James Madison had his shooting boots on, we would have held corn up at Leicester. We're just lucky that they yeah. couldn't score for love or money. Right? And obviously, look, we're trying to keep the positivity and not try to focus on the negatives and all that sort of thing, and that's cool. But I've had time to reflect on those last three games. And honestly, that performance yesterday, who looked like they'd had three good results on the bounce and who looked like they had three L's on the bounce? Because mm. it damn sure weren't us. And no. people are going to be chatting about, oh, Luca was dead food and this player was dead food and all of that. It's a rebuild. It's going to take more than just two summers to get us to play the style of football that Patrick Vieira wants. Arguably, could we have tried harder to bring in the likes of Sumare or one of these midfielders? Absolutely. But we don't have a bottomless pit of money to throw around, mm. even though we've got two American billionaires who somehow, between them, can't find their wallets. They might have to put a tracking chip on it like a pair of earpods or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But... <laughs> I look at that performance yesterday, Rich, right? And part of me is saying, all right, 3-0, bad result, bad performance, deservedly lost, fair play to Everton, absolutely played us off the park. But at the same time, I say it all the time, charity, professional, football club. What's that? Your striker hasn't scored in 600 years? What's that? You've got a winger that looks somehow bang average, but he needs to score a goal to get his confidence up? Come play charity, professional, football club. I'm going to record the promo for it tonight. Trust me. <laughs> I know he's waiting on it. I'm going to record it tonight when I get home from work. But yeah, I hear look, you. Rich, it's one of them games. We were doo doo. We played like doo doo. We got a doo doo result. I don't really know what else you can say about it apart from, well, we have to get a win against Southampton now. You know, Not I was on the yesterday and I said the same thing. I said, look, you play like doo doo. You get a doo doo result. Why are people losing their mind over a poor performance? We were poor. One to 11, not good enough. But look, before before I start ranting and going up in the sky and that, I'm going to land and let you take over, bro. So I, I don't need to, I don't need to, I'm to give you the floor. No, no, this is what this is about. It's, it's, it's an open space to obviously express our feelings and stuff. But I wanted to really break this down because obviously, like I said, I needed, I needed 24 hours to process this. So I've kind of come up with like a few questions to, that we can both discuss and uh -huh. to kind of really figure out are we going to blame the manager, the players, or both sort of thing? Mm. Now, let, let, let's talk about the aspect of going to Goodison Park. We we should know by now, but from watching Everton Football Club, that Goodison Park is a difficult place to go, irregardless of form or whatever. It is a terrible place to go to for any mm. team. Mm. The question is, because I know a lot's going to be spoken about the team selection, and we'll chop that up as well. A lot is going to be talked about the, the players who were picked and whether or not we should have gone with two DMs or one DM and so on and so forth. But the bare bones of it, and this is what I tweeted out yesterday, we just didn't work hard. Sorry, Rich, one second. I'll be back in a sec. Yeah, yeah. We just didn't work hard, in my personal opinion. You cannot go to a place like Goodison Park where you know that if the fans are on it, 
it's, it's, it's almost like Goodison Park kind of epitomizes Sellers Park in a sense. When the crowd's on it, like it's an it's a hostile environment for any team to play in. So knowing that like we, we should have gone there and we should have had fight. There was no fight. That's the bare minimum. Just work hard. If we go there, work hard and still lose, you hold your hands up and say, listen, we tried. But just watching that game, and especially after the first goal we conceded, that was it. It's like we lost all sort of composure. We lost all, all sort of fight. There was lack of shape. I was just w- watching the goals back and I was thinking, they've got three, four, five players running towards our back line and we are all over the gaff. So that was my, my biggest my biggest concern with, with yesterday is literally the lack of fight, the lack of... Like, they... If I don't know what the running stats were, but I wouldn't be surprised if they had like doubled the amount of running that that we had, you know. And we, we, there's no way in in this era of football now that we're gonna compete with teams if we're not able to just match their their, their output in running and stuff, you know. Um, they they pressed well when we had the ball. They pressed really well, in fact. Um, and we didn't match that when they had the ball at the back, you know. Um, as much as Cody and Tarkovsky may not be the best passing centre backs and stuff, they look very comfortable. Mm. Yeah, you'd think that Gay and Anderson are a better centre back partnership than they are, but we, we they were put under far much pressure, more pressure than we put on their centre backs. So that was one of the, the first issues. Like I said, we're not working hard enough, and and that leads me into my second point. And I, I really want you to hear your point on this. Should we have gone with two? De- and they, obviously, this is now hindsight. The game's done. The game's done. We lost. We deserve to lose. So this is all hindsight. Should we have gone with two DMs? So a Luca and someone. Because obviously, Schlupp and he got dropped for this game. Or, as Vieira said, that listen, he, he he's kind of been liking this playing one DM and two Roman eights and stuff. And for the most part, we've done all right with it, you know? But was we tactically naive to not t- change it up, especially knowing that Takori wasn't available? Yes, obviously. Because, let's be honest, Luca and Jairo can't do what Takori does. Will Hughes is coming back off illness. Mm. And look at our midfield options after them. It's Killian Phillips. It's Jack Wells Morrison. Neither of whom are ready for Premier League football. Or of the two, you'd argue Killian, Killian Phillips is closer. But again, you don't want to rush kids into a game where, okay, it's not life and death. It's not the end of the season, relegation, playoff and what have you. But our lack of forward planning in the transfer window has bit us on the arse massively. And some people don't want to hear that being said. Some people just want to bury their head in the sand and act as if that's just a fluke result. What happened the last time we went to Goodison Park against Everton? If anything, that was worse than this because we were 2-0 up and cruising and somehow decided not, I repeat, not to kill the game off. Everton got their tails up, got back in the game and ended up winning the game 3-2 and it helped them stay in the Premier League for another season. Now, a club like Everton, you never want to see them relegated. Historic club, proud club, great club, cracking away day, right? But my sympathy was with the fans who paid money to watch that yesterday, who travelled from London. Absolutely. Because, look, we thought it was bad going up Leicester. At least at Leicester, the pub was lit. (laughs) You know what I mean? But I've actually seen some Palace fans' tweets saying that the whole experience, from the train up from Euston all the way up to the ground, it was shocking. Now, obviously, as you say, the game is done, so this is purely hindsight. And, yes, we probably could have done with having a second DM on the pitch. But who do you play? Because we're not blessed with fantastic quality DMs who've got legs in their who've got who've got their legs on them. Redevald can't kick a ball in frustration. Luca was past it maybe one or two seasons ago. Will Hughes isn't really much of a DM. He's more of a box to box midfielder, albeit he's come from a fairly low block team like Watford to another low block team like us. I mean, we're trying to play a more expansive style now. And personally, if he were fit, I would have played Will Hughes in this game, as in fully match fit and not coming back off. I think it was Rona, I think. Yeah, I, I believe that's what was, was out there. I, 
and the fact that it, 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 it was that the there was no chance to start. like that to come back from that is not easy you know what i mean so i think as a fan base we just got to kind of just accept the fact that he was not ready for this game now but listen we we deserved a beating let's be honest we got the stepchild beating yesterday and thoroughly deserved it because you can't go into any premier league game in form i think that form's going to continue unless you've got the squad to maintain it which we do not. Now, that isn't a negatively, pardon my French, crap on our players or our manager or our recruitment because we've done really well the last couple of years in bringing top quality players to the club to improve our club's image and improve our playing style. But we've still got players from previous eras at the football club. Joel Ward was there when we won promotion. And I'm not trying to diss Joel Ward here because he's been one of the most loyal players you'll ever ask. He's never once let us down. But you can clearly see his best days are behind him. And I can't see him getting a new contract on the end of the season because he's, he's out of contract at the end of the year, I believe. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, at the end of the, uh, in, in May of, in, in May of 2023. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, and it hurts to say it, but we could have done with Kiate yesterday because you look at how he played in the Liverpool Forest game. You're like, yeah, not with him. But we chose to move on. We weren't prepared to offer him the money he wanted. We weren't prepared to offer him the contract he wanted. He chose to go to Forest and smashed it yesterday. Fair play to him. (laughs) If you want to see progress, Rich, you have to have adversity. You have to have setbacks. You have to have games where you're thinking, how the hell are we going to be relatively decent as we do do? Because that's what that was yesterday. And I'm going to keep saying it till, till people get it in their heads. That was appalling. But having said that, this performance and this result was on the horizon. People just didn't want to see it. Leicester was a warning shot. We are awful away from home. I think only us and Liverpool have failed to win on the road so far this season. We used to pride ourselves on our away form. And we would do the... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird, isn't it? We can't get a balance, right? <laughs> Though in a Sellers Park, like, oh no, we're playing Bournemouth at Sellers Park. They haven't beaten us there since 1966. We know what's happening now, isn't it? Corn, yeah. corn, corn. Now we go Sellers Park. We're like, yeah, we're going to win today, or we'll put in a shift today. We may not win, but we'll put in a shift. We go away from home. May we're holding L's, bruv. You know, but yeah. What can, look? What can you say? If it was easy, it wouldn't be Palace. So it's Good easy point. to get all riled up and going mad and moving mad about manager out, board out, this out, that out, blah, 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 blah. People's opinions are their own. I'm not going to say anybody's wrong, but yeah, I've even seen someone say that Guaita is a better goalkeeper than Spironi on Twitter. Now, obviously, Twitter is a pinch of salt kind of area, but I'm dead thinking, I'm not here for these mad takes today. <laughs> That's going to make my blood pressure go through the roof, mate. I'm not having this it. Is it. This I'm not is entertaining it. it. But look, it was one of their performances that you just have to accept, we got beaten by the better team and it was light work for them. As much as I yeah. don't like saying it, it was light work. So, and let's be honest, we've not really bopped anyone off the pitch this season. Like It's funny, yeah, because we've been talking about a team, one day a team's going to get it from us, like, and it just hasn't come yet. Because, I mean, the endeavour, apart from yesterday, like, I think under Patrick Vieira's reign, Watford away was the only time that we absolutely bopped someone off the pitch. Yeah. But I think that was probably the worst all-round performance in his reign. I'm just trying to, even if I'm thinking back to last year, and I know we've lost we lost a few games last year, but I'm just thinking collectively, yeah, I think just for me personally, I think it's our worst performance on this. And you said something that I think I, I agree with. I know it's not good to lose. But we deserve to lose in this manner because it shows that if we don't work hard in future, we will get nothing. You know, so if there's anything we're gonna take from yesterday's defeat, is that we need to work harder as a team. Simple as. Simple it's as. like turning up to work, Rich. If you're not prepared for the day, you don't deserve to get paid. Mm. I can't come into work half dressed expecting everybody to go, oh yeah, cool, Nate's here. Cool, cool. It's like, Nate, where's your uniform? You know what I'm saying? Same with any other other profession. Now, obviously, we are in a position where 10, 10 Premier League seasons, we haven't really done an awful lot, but our stadium is a massive handicap. And we're forgetting this. The whole point of the main stand is to improve our non 
broadcast revenue because we can't compete with Newcastle and these other teams. And that's totally fine. We don't want to be an oil club or whatever people want to call it. But let's say somebody way wealthier than our current owners does take over and they're able to push things along with Selhurst Park, maybe build a stadium back at Crystal Palace if that's a more feasible option. It won't happen, but this is the thing you have to you have to kind of convince. And they're dead, they're dead set on doing Selhurst Park up, which good luck to you because it's going to be a bit of a pain in the backside to do it. But you can clearly see we're over-reliant on Wilfred Zaha on Eberechi Eze, Michael Alise and Odson Edouard. But when you don't see them working together, you got, you got to question, can they play together? Because it doesn't look like they can. we even seen it in the Wolves game. Chance after chance after chance was going begging because the second, the, the second movement, the second pass wasn't there. We're either passing it back, crossing it, or we're losing the ball in midfield and having to come back and try and defend. So, look, we're still a work in progress. And I'm not remotely trying to say that, oh, we've got to be doing better. We should be beating teams like Everton. On our day, yes. But not yesterday. Yesterday, I'm not even going to lie. We probably could have played the Palace women's team. They would have battered Everton. They would have played better than our men's team. And that's not a reflection on women's football in the slightest because we love to see the women's game is growing. But let's be honest, that kind of a performance is why we are where we are. We're not a European contending team. People chatting about Europa Conference League and all of that. Nah, big man. We ain't getting that with Joel Ward at right back, Luka Milivojevic in defensive midfield. Like, what? You know, it's... Like Malcolm Abiwe, for example, he can't do anything to get in the team. Does that not say a lot about him? Like, he's a hot prospect that's meant to be one of the next best things out of the championship. Still can't get a look in over players that, let's be frank, have done nothing all season. Schlupp, Ayu. Ayu's good at winning fouls. It was a big him up. But he's an attacking player. And he's got zero attacking output. But Rich, I'm not going to lie. You see Ayu, watch he's going to have a blinding World Cup for Ghana if he decides to turn up. Now, I'm not going to put my house on that because I'd lose my house in a heartbeat. <laughs> That's a big <laughs> risk. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's absolute muck for Palace in the league. And then when he goes away to play for the Black Stars, he's like, oh, I'm playing for Ghana now. I can actually turn up for a change. No, he, he's he's uh, kind of he's kind of stinky there too. To be fair, no, no, I know he is. I was rolling all mad about him. <laughs> Bowling night was something else. We won't go into detail on that one. But you know, you know, what I'm saying there's players at this club that have just overstayed their welcome, and this is not a reflection on them at the moment. It's just the reality of where we are. Because look, yeah. we've got a decent squad, but it's not the squad we want to play the football we're trying to play. Yeah, so that falls back on the recruitment. Why weren't we pursuing Flynn Downs a lot harder than we did? Why did we wait and wait and wait and wait for Conor Gallagher to give us an answer? When we should have said, you know what? I want to say Chelsea, oh, we'll move get a couple of other players in. Let, let, let's break down the goals now. Um, now, you know what? This first goal, I've seen a lot of people blame. I mean, there was numerous mistakes in the goal. All right. But obviously, as, as you do, you kind of only tend to blame the ones you, to scapegoat. Now, there's been a lot of Luca talk. Yes, he did lose the ball. However, I'm going to give him a bit of a benefit of the doubt because the ball, the ball into him from Tariq Mitchell was terrible. He's, he's kind of forced him to have to stretch, which made Calvert Lewin get an opportunity to get back at him. You know, Luca had no, it just wasn't in the right position to be able to protect the ball. Because obviously Tariq Mitchell's passing with his weaker foot, fair enough. But he's played it a bit too far in front of Luca, and he's had to stretch. Mind you, I guess you could argue, listen, just get your body in the way by a foul. Listen, he's lost possession. But what happens after that is preventable. Mm. It's preventable. Mark Gay needs to take a massive look at himself in that goal. <laughs> Not only did he get megged, he got bulldozed. Yeah? So if we're going to point fingers... Mark Gay is number one. Number yeah, two, 100%, 100%. I think Gaeta has got to get a stronger hand on that. Mm -hmm. If he parries it out wide and, and we'll talk about parrying the one for Gordon's, oh my gosh. But if you if you talk about parrying it out and someone scores a tapping from that, fair enough, because at least you've parried it away uh, from DCL. But he doesn't get a strong enough hand in it. So Gay is to blame, in my opinion. Then Gaeta could have done better before we look at Luca. 
and such. But obviously, I think he'll get scapegoated. Now, this is not me trying to say, oh, he should be starting every game. No, not at all. But let's also be a bit sensible here. When we're pointing the finger, yes, Luca lost the ball, but Gay's done, he's defended, he's defended terribly there. Absolutely poor. You know, and I think it kind of it set the tone. If you don't keep Goodison Park quiet, you're not getting out of there with any points. Simple as. We don't Simple get points from there anyway, bro. I don't know why people were shocked we lost. <laughs> Good point. You know what? I don't even, I guess maybe for us, like, I mean, I weren't very, I don't think a lot of us were optimistic. Yes, Everton have been bad. We have to put our hands up there and stuff. But like I said, it's never an easy game. Never an easy game. And um, we just didn't turn up. So it's more so the manner. We were dreadful, you know. Like if we had put up a look of fight, you just hold your hands up and say, Listen, we were unlucky on today. Fair enough, it happens. But we weren't good enough. We weren't good enough. The second goal and the third goal, they it was like the parting of the Red Sea. Where on earth was the midfield? Joel Woods all of a sudden f f forgets he's a right back at times. He he's got he tucks way, he tucks in too much, which prevents him from getting out. Uh, Please correct me if I'm wrong. Was it Damari Gray that had the shot that got parried? I think so, because I think Anthony Gordon got the rebound. He got a tap in, yeah. But once again, Gaeta, he's got he's got like flappy wrists, boy. Pancake like, wrists, bro. Pancake hands, bro. Like he's got to do better hmm. in that. But once again, like the, the whole team was nowhere to be teased. And you know what was crazy? And once again, this is not a back in Luca thing, and I'm not trying to support him and stuff. But Luca went on the pitch for that one. Mm -hmm. He went on the pitch for that one. But the agenda is mad. It's crazy. I've been I've been seeing some of the tweets and that it's it's been a bit mad. I've caught it's people like, lovely with it because they're saying, "Oh, Luca's the worst player ever in a Palace shirt," and I went, "Big man, <laughs> Thomas Brolin, yeah, Jordan <laughs> Much, yeah, Zeki Fryers, yeah, Adi Akinbai, yeah." You really want to go? You, you really want to go down that road? Well? You know what I'm saying? I said, brother. Luca is past it for now, but to put him in the same bracket as Brolin, Akinbai, March, Friars, Jimmy Kebe, like Elliot Grandin, uh, what was that brother's name? He used to, um, oh god, uh, Adebayor. Oh, yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Other, like, we had uh, was it Anthony Gardner as well. We've had some. I don't talk to me about that guy. <laughs> don't talk to me about that guy, man. I can't stand that guy. Hey, he's some shockers. He's such a no. He's such a pagan. Man's trying. Like when he left, you had to go. Chef Wendy was like, "Oh, Chef Wednesday are, are a good club to get into the Premier League." Oh. What, a, what a shock! He leaves, we get promoted. Good. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> cool. But I'll never forgive him for that own goal at Cardiff in the League Cup semi final. That's why he's a pagan because it's like, bruh, you're a defender. Like, yeah, oh, just but no, to, to bring it back to the Everton, look, we got to be real, we can dissect these goals at every which way from Sunday all we want, but reality is, you give teams goals like that, they're gonna take them. And I keep saying it, people keep telling me, oh, why'd you keep calling us Charity Professional Football Club? Uh, hello, exhibit A, <laughs> need I say more? All I'm missing is the, is, is the lawyer suit. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm just thinking, mate, like, don't get me wrong. We deserve to have a reality check every now and again. We've done relatively well this season, having had an impossibly hard start. Yeah. Liverpool, Arsenal, City, Chelsea, Newcastle, all, play, uh, all played within the first eight to nine games, whatever it is we're on now. 11, whatever it is now. I don't know what we're on now. But suffice to say, we've played some of the hardest teams in the league. And we've only lost to City, Arsenal and Chelsea. We've taken points of Newcastle and Liverpool out of those five. Granted, it's two points, one of which we were fortunate to take. But people need to take into, into context. We have an F up in us. Every season. Every season we have it in us to have an absolute calamitous game where the whole fan base goes into meltdown because Luca came on, Luca was subbed on and had half a decent game. Luca was subbed off and we concede. It don't matter what player goes on or off. The minute we concede, heads drop, people start pulling off full-blown tantrums. And I'm thinking, imagine if their parents could see this. 
Like, I seen we conceded and went, oh, yeah, Charity Professional Football Club, cool, keep it moving. We're going to lose 3 0, hold corn, move. I don't, I don't get invested like that anymore because it's not healthy for you. That's when you take it way more personally than you should. But I don't know, Rich. Like, I want us, I want to be positive and say we'll bounce back against Southampton, but I don't know if we will. Because we've got to play that little, pardon my French, rat M Effer. JWP, he's coming back to haunt us because I don't like him. Yeah, yeah he's now, annoying, isn't he? <laughs> now, if he was in our team, I'd absolutely love him because he's a quality player. Let's not, let's not, yeah. let's not, um, let's not get it twisted here. But I just can't stand him. Same way they can't stand Wilf. Yeah, there's that, it's literally that. Yeah, yeah, it's that dyad of they can't stand our academy player, we can't stand theirs. But. It's annoying. It's frustrating. But it is Crystal Palace. It's what we do. When people expect us to win, we F up. When we don't expect to win, somehow we end up getting something from it. I thought we were going to get absolutely finessed by Liverpool. We got a point. Probably could have nicked it had Zaha's shot the hit the post gone in. Yeah. I was all the same. I was like, yo, we're holding corn today. Just about got away with a controversial VAR call. But it goes for you. You keep it moving. I the Leeds game, how we weren't three or four down before half time was beyond me. Leicester could have been two down before half time. Somehow, yeah. Wolves probably should have been out of sight three, four nil by half time. They didn't bring their shooting boots. So, for all these good results that we've seen, right, and we're confident, we're happy, you know, with the fan cams for the Wolves game, we're bouncy and everything. I've looked back on them and I'm like, you know what? Mm. We're not looking great right now. We're getting results, and that's all that matters. If you can play crap and get results, nobody's going to bat an eyelid. But as fans who pay their money to go watch the team, we want to see the team do well. We don't, we don't have the players to do so, Rich. And it's not just me. Who's, uh, JC has said this on a number of shows. You've said this. I've said this. Dan said it when we went on, on the train up to Leicester. We've heard Nicky say it as well. But we, us on the channel are seeing it. It's just the wider fan base is some of them are willing to accept it and see it, and some are kind of willing to just ostrich and be like proper head in the sand. Mm. And that's but uh, who was it? Uh, uh, Doc Brown even said we are still ways away from where some of our fans think we're going. That being yeah. league and European contention, we're yeah. ways away from that. Yeah, Jake, it's funny you say it's funny you say that because um start of the season like I've had a lot of people ask me ah. Oh, what do you think about this is going to finish? I said, you know, I will actually take another 12th to 14th finish. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I was thinking more so on the, sign, the signs of like second season syndrome. It, it's real. It's bitten a few teams in the backside, you know. And I think, yeah. oh, for Vieira, you know what? The expectation could be nuts. Let's let's just see the season out in, in the sense. And then, um, and then build from there. Like the third season, we need to kick on and stuff. Now, a lot of people say, no, that's not ambitious. You need to be thinking in top 10. I'm not saying that we can't. But we can. Listen, with the, as you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of clubs that just have so much more money than us. <laughs> you know, we're, we're almost like, we're almost self-sufficient in a sense where sometimes we may even have to sell to buy. You know, we'll get wages of our books to buy, you know, like... That's what's going to happen when the, when the main stand gets built. Because... D said this brilliantly on Back of the Nest, and shout out to the, to, to, to the team at Back of the Nest. He said, yeah. us and Southampton are one of the two of the only Premier League clubs that constantly rely on their own academies. Now, mm. obviously, we haven't really seen an exponential number of academy players come through, but we have brought academy players through since we've been back yeah. in the Prem. Wambasaka and Mitchell being the two most prominent, and arguably Raksaki, but he's, he's still way too young, in my opinion. That's why he's on loan at Charlton this season, and good luck to him. Could have been with a better club, but we move. But but you know what I mean? Like we've seen the likes of Hiram Boateng and Kyle De Silva and all these guys from back in the day come through, and you're like, oh, cool, another academy player. But they haven't cut, they haven't made it. Kai Kai never made it. Boateng never made it. There's no guarantee that um, ironically, I think David and Malachi Boateng will make it, and they're both up in on loan at Scotland together. So if we can't go and spend 50, 60, 70 million every season. We need to be looking at our academy and going, right, is Wells Morrison ready? Maybe not. Send him out on loan to non-league for the moment. Send him out to a national league team or a league two team. Is Killian Phillips ready? Why not? Stick him in there. 
He was one of the most impressive players on that preseason tour. And you could see there was something there, that there's something workable there. Now, I'm not saying he's brilliant or world-class or any of that. But if we're not going to start spending money like it's out going out of fashion, we need to be looking in-house and going, right, there's a couple of players in the 23s we might be able to blood and see can they hack it. There's no guarantee they can, but you never know. You know, uh, what's that? Uh, is it Omalabu? Yeah. Yeah. David yeah. Omalabu, yeah. He's the, he's the one that everyone wants to see more of because he had a fantastic season a couple of years ago. Yeah, and also um, JKG as well. Uh, John Kamani Gordon, yeah. Yeah, he, he's been doing really well. And it's obviously, he's been on the bench a few times as well for us. So. Yeah. yeah. It's just like I said, Rich, it, it's hard to look at yesterday's result and be ultra negative and not try and say, right, we held a beat-in, which we thoroughly deserved, we needed it to focus ourselves and make us actually want to win the next game. Because when you're on a good run of form, you're expecting to win. And that's where the arrogance kicks in. Mm. We've had three, I think this is only our third or fourth loss this season. Yeah, fourth Arsenal, loss, yeah. Arsenal, City, Chelsea, and now Everton. So to have not lost to Liverpool and Newcastle, who both have better players than us, we're on the right track. But it's the first loss in God knows how long. Oh, we're getting relegated. We're playing Millwall next year. We're going to be playing Child in a couple of years. We're going to be playing Sutton in a couple of years in League Two. We're getting relegated. It's like, all right, cool. Keep that energy. Because when results start to pile up and we actually start to pull on a bit, they're the first that are going to be jumping up. Oh, yeah, we're dead good. We're Palace. Duh, 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 duh. Hold this, hold that. Duh, 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 duh. It's like, yeah. no, we would do yesterday. And I'm not hearing any other excuses other than we were poor from start. To end. That's it. <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? Like, it's easy to get carried away and be like, oh, yeah, we were a bit unlucky and the referee this. That. I'm not hearing mm. no excuses from any Palace fan. And you know the joke on the battle on that as well? Like, irregardless of what 11 we picked, we were just bad. Mm -hmm. We yeah. were just bad. Simple as. And we just got to, we just got to set that. The players have got to take, put their hands up and say, you know what? That was a bad day in the office. But... Before we quickly wrap up, because I, I don't want to talk about this game any longer, because it's going to just pee me off. Really. <laughs> Can I just say, wh why am I not shocked that we made Calvert-Lewin look like he was back to his best yesterday? Why am, why am I not shocked that we did that? I even tweeted it out, Chariot Professional yeah. Football. I've told people, <laughs> I've told people, if your striker needs to look like he's back in form and back among the best of the business... Just come play Chariot Professional Football Club, mate. We'll still get out with a hat trick, a brace, this, that, the other. Wood. Don't worry, mate. What's that? You've got a goalkeeper that hasn't kept a clean sheet for love or money? Can't play Jerry Professional Football Club. We'll get you a discount on a clean sheet. No problem, mate. No problem. Just call 0800 1861 1905. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just dreadful, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like, if, 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 if we don't laugh, we'll cry. That's how bad it is. You know, and look, it's one loss after God knows how long. The last time we lost was the start of the month against Chelsea. So, and that was an unfortunate loss as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got to put perspective into it. But don't worry, Palace Twitter is in full blown meltdown yeah. mode. It's Nigelitis is rife on Palace Twitter, so I'm keeping away from it. I don't <laughs> get involved with Palace Twitter after we lose because it's toxic. Britney Spears settings, yeah. it's toxic, bruv. It's, to it's horrible. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, rah, imagine we actually had history and had trophies and this and that. Can you imagine how worse it would be then? We've won nothing yeah. and people are like, oh, we're getting relegated. Cool. I like championship away days. They're more fun. There's less hassle and there's less, you know, there's less problems. But we ain't getting relegated, people. We're going to struggle for a bit this season because the World Cup's going to F up everybody. But look, yeah, we had to hold a beating yesterday because we deserved it. I don't want to be one of these fans that can't admit we were, pardon my friend, DS yesterday. Because that's exactly what we were. Yeah. Dog-ish. Pure dog-ish. And I know it's easy to kind of go on a rant and moan and whinge and all of that, but held a beat down. Got to get move on with Southampton. Hopefully we can get a draw or a win out of that. We'll have to see how we fare. We'll have to hope there's some team news coming back that we've got a couple of players coming back. Mm, it should be important, but yeah. If it was easy, it wouldn't be Palace. So I'm not, I'm not worried. I'm a little bit annoyed. Won't lie. But I'm not sure. Because if you've seen the group chat, mate... Yo, what in there? <laughs> I know he's going to watch this later on. 
Oh man, Sean. To be fair, though, he did. He did. I would say he retracted the statement, but he, he, you can tell the emotions got to him. By I know. Listen, football is an emotional game, and I'm and I'm here for him, living him, you know, being himself and expressing himself. Yeah, but he's got to hold that L. Wow, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like. Bro, by all means, be peed off that we lost to the Frank Lampard Everton side. But, mate, there's ways to lose, bro. That's not the way. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, peace. We're going to wrap it up there, man. There's no point of doing... Um, Player rating. Like, they're all getting minus, everyone, everyone <laughs> getting minus 10. Everyone's getting minus 10, bro. Vieira, minus 10. Guaita, minus 10. Joel Ward, minus 10. <laughs> Every single one of them on the bench, even if they didn't play, minus 10. You know why? Yeah. Because we're eagle-eyed deluded over here. That's what we want to become right now. Eagle-eyed deluded. <laughs> Never mind eagle-eyed football. Nah, but honestly, people, listen. Held corn, deserve the beat down. He's rich. I'm Nate. There's no Premier League review show. We're going to bring that back next week. But we move on to Southampton on the weekend. Hopefully, Charity Professional Football Club does not have a repeat performance because I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't, I can't, I can't go through it again because I'm going to be traumatised by having to do a promo for this now. <laughs> well, I said I'd do it. I'm going to keep to my word. People, we're out. Out the palace. Peace. Thank you.